I'm going to go harvest stuff. I have a not so helpful garden helper. Uh, my bonus barn is here. It's too bright. Because it's too bright. Um, yeah, my bonus barn is here. And he's playing with the truck inside. So I'm going to try to do this fast. Because toddler chaos. Making terrible life choices. Fake crocs in the grass. Very wet feet. Um, we haven't gotten much rain, but we still have stuff going on. My holy basil is happier over here. The tomatoes that I wound through are still alive, so that's a win. These pumpkins are now making it through here, so maybe I'll actually have something on the arbor. Um, this Chinese cabbage, Napa cabbage, Wong Bok is actually starting to make something that looks like a cabbage, so we might have some cabbages. <laughs> um, just harvesting purple green beans over there quite frequently. All of my fennel has bolted, so I'm just letting it go to seed, and then hoping I'll get volunteer fennel later <laughs> this year, and then to save the fennel seed for, as a spice. Um, and like occasionally I'll harvest some of the fronds, but we're not getting fennel bulbs. Um, so yeah, that's just my own fault. I planted them at the wrong time of year. Uh, powdery mildew galore in that, but the outsides are still happy and there's no pumpkins in the powdery mildew. And I'm just letting it do what it's doing because we've already gotten like 15 pumpkins and we've got at least another 10 that are like in process and on the way. Uh, Brussels sprouts are heading up everywhere. Random carrots, peas are coming through. Cucumbers now have structure. Um, yeah. Succession planting of peas. This volunteer spinach is very happy. That red cabbage that I planted last year is finally starting to head up, which is just hilarious to me. I don't think it will be a delicious, edible, tasty treat, but I'm just letting it do what it wants to do. Um, we're finally getting a cucumber off this one plant that was in here now that it's open to the elements. This giant monster of a Brussels sprout is still very happy in there. Um, yeah. We have lots of frogs in the garden. More Brussels sprouts. More peas. Uh, kohlrabi. That, these have actually been really tasty. So, little bulbs. So they're good. Just peel them, eat them. <sighs> Very oddly shaped cucumber due to weird pollination issues. Uh, I think that's a kohlrabi in there. This is a phasalis, aka ground cherry, aka stuff we don't actually like to eat, and this is going to now volunteer in my garden forever. Nasturtium. Uh, some beets in here, cylindra that I need to harvest. This also has sweet potatoes, which I need to harvest. Um, just random carrots and a couple Brussels sprouts. Kale and Brussels sprouts. Um, harvesting the cauliflower. They're not very big because they got outcompeted for nutrients with this mass of chaos. But um, they're, they're still tasty. They're just small. These are express cabbages that are heading up, which is awesome. We should have cabbage. That's an asparagus frond. Uh, onions and uh, strawberries that are still alive. Just pumpkin nonsense, because pumpkin nonsense. It's very funny. I'm just letting it happen, and it's going to run out the back <laughs> and onto the field. Uh, yeah, and I think there's a tomato plant back there that volunteered from nowhere so i'm just going to assume the compost or a child dropped a tomato back there a long time ago um so i'm gonna have to okay now i have to go into the weirdness because there's weirdness yeah that's absolutely a tomato plant okay well there's a pumpkin down there and there are pastas, and then that is a very random tomato plant that has blossoms on it. So, hello, random tomato plant. <laughs>
I will absolutely eat your fruit as soon as I see what you are. But I'm going to guess that's a sweet 100 based on everything I know about the tomato varieties that I've grown and what they look like. And that is, yeah, that is definitely growing out of the compost. So that's really funny. Um, and what's happening here? Yeah. Hello, pumpkin monster. Oh, yeah, in case you're unaware, pumpkins can be monsters and they will take down everything in their path. So I'm gonna try to let this tomato live a little bit better of a life. Um, it liked, it was tucked back here. So yeah, so I'm gonna tuck it back in the fence and then I'm gonna redirect this pumpkin that way because there's another pumpkin there. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to go harvest on the field. It's fine. And I think I just kicked a pumpkin. Nope, it's chaos in here. But yeah, that guy is enormous. That's like four times the size of the first ones. And there's another one. I got pumpkins everywhere. And things catching rain, which, yeah, that'll be fine. But yeah, hi, volunteer tomato. You, you are very healthy and strong. And growing out of the bottom of that compost pile, that is the most plants want to live that there ever is. Makes me happy. Okay, I have made a terrible life choice, <laughs> and I'm just in the patch, but, um, yeah, we'll see. That thing's a monster. It makes me very excited, but it's a monster, and that's one. We have too many. Uh, my blackberries suck. I don't know if it's because we got in so much rain, um, but they suck. They've been molding and, like, being either really too tart or very watery and not very good and they're kind of trying to take over that area and I want to get rid of this elephant grass that the previous owner uh, planted um, and the reason I haven't torn it up is there's tayberries in there that are really good but I think this year like this winter I'm going to have to tear all of that up and then re like dig up the plants and then move them so that I can put them back along the fence line which would make more sense than them being in the middle it's just a stupid thing that I did and with perennials, don't make permanent decisions that are bad. Plan that stuff. This is a mistake. It's fine. But yeah, I want to kill that grass and get rid of it all. And because this used to be a pool. It made more sense when it was a pool. It doesn't make sense now. It's just nonsense and making my food forest weird. And then I get, it's like you can see the seed heads up top there. <sighs> they just go. And then we have random ones of this nonsense that we don't actually want in places where we're trying to grow food. So I need to, I need to actually handle this, this situation, but that is absolutely a winter project when things have died back and you don't have as much work to do outside that is required or all of your food goes bad. This just, it looks horrible, but you can see how happy that pumpkin is back there. So you know that like, it, it's okay. Hey, it'll be okay. The food is good. Um, yeah, this is weird. Hi, spider friend. Um, but yeah, this was a, like, summer squash plant. And uh, I have very little summer squash this year and, like, a million pumpkins. And I'm not entirely certain why. But yeah, but, yeah. It's what it is. It's fine. Uh, most of my summer squash plants just died. Yeah, Brussels sprouts. I just think they're really pretty plants. Like, I just think they're pretty. And they're, I think they're better than cabbages, personally. Because you just get little mini cabbages on the side. So, like, when you cut a head of cabbage off, it's one and done, right? And Brussels sprouts, like, we ate off them for six months last year. And they stay in the garden. They survive the hard, the hard frost. Um, it's only when it gets down to, like, 12 Fahrenheit minus 12 Celsius that it like they'll start to actually die back and need protection but up until that point they're just like whatever I'm cool <laughs> so we have a bunch of different varieties all around the garden and like as fall setting in like the brassicas are really just very happy and taking off and I should really preserve a bunch of this food but 
I'm, I'm not. And I'm just adding it to compost piles and to the chickens um, diet because they like it. And I'm turning them into eggs rather than freezing um, brassicas because they'll survive the winter. They're just going to be really great established plants and I can just harvest from the bottom up to the top. And then in the spring, a bunch of them will set off shoots and then we'll have like fake broccoli from all of them. Uh, I might have a problem with how much I love brassicas. Um, but yeah, but we have all these freaking pumpkins. So we, we have all these freaking pumpkins. And I don't even think there were that many plants like in there. I think there's like maybe nine plants that have made all of these. And like this, there's like two of these that have made a ridiculous amount of these um, pumpkins. They're either red curry or bambino. But I think they're red curry. And then that's the fourth butternut on this vine. It's just, there's just bananas. Or not butternut, sorry. Uh, spaghetti squash. So, yeah. We've got a four and a half kilo spaghetti squash in the house. It's like way too big. And ridiculous. Hey, chick chicks. I know. You want your breakfast. I'm coming to you next. Um... I put a tomato sucker in here and it's using the corn as structure, which is just an experiment, but we are definitely getting tomatoes and they're not having blossom end rot. They're not splitting. They are loving this nonsense and they're just growing in the corn and the corn is tasseling. And so this is my succession planting that I direct sowed and like, Hopefully we'll get better ears of corn because it's so much tighter. Hi, guys. Well, this is all the chickens saying, woman, feed me. I'm hungry. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we should we should have some corn. And then these are butternut squash plants. So we'll see if I get any. They're the Waltham variety. And then there's a weird cucumber in there that I planted before when it didn't work. Um, there's a couple of dino keels in here. And then more of the ground elder, because that's always the case. Um, hi. Okay. Yeah, I'll go get your breakfast. Calm down, buddy. They're just like being chickens. It's funny. Um, this has some mature carrots in it. And then I sewed some spinach over there. So it's starting to come up. I need to water this to ensure germination. There's a couple of beets in here too. So I've got beets and spinach germinating and then carrots that'll need to come out. Ugh. My summer cabbages that never headed up, just competing with ground elder. This Colette is happy. These, this broccoli's okay. It's not great, but it's alive. Hey, yeah, I hear you, buddy. Uh, carrots, thyme, rosemary. It got down to 7 Celsius last night, which is like just way too freaking cold. Um, I'm trying to grow artichokes. It's not working. There's a volunteer shard that's just growing in the corner. Further proof that plants just want to live. These are known as beans. Um, these were sent to me from a friend in Seattle who I love dearly. And I was worried that I was going to kill them. And... They're thriving in this climate, which makes sense because Seattle and uh, Scone are very similar. But there is one, two, three plants, right? And this one has just exploded and is very happy. And so I'm going to keep, I'm letting these fully develop so that we can keep the seeds and I can have more of Nona's beans next year. And then it broke out through, the, they found a crack in the glass so it could grow outside. And so I'm also going to try to save a couple of pods from the beans that have come outside. Um, and then these ones I'm going to purposely plant on the arbor in the back and maybe actually get something on the arbor for once, which would be cool. But yeah, Nona is going to grow inside and outside. We'll see. Um, I'm fairly certain this is a walking stick kale and I just thought it was a cauliflower and I've been treating it like it's cauliflower. 
instead of a walking stick kale. So we should start eating this and see if we actually like the flavor because it can get like six feet tall, which is kind of amazing. And it's just growing in this little pot, which is equally amazing. Um, some leeks and celeriac and rosemary that I planted a million years ago. Um, more Chinese cabbage and beets. And this is to protect from the birds just eating them down when they were babies. So you can see, oh, and then my lemon balm back there. But you can see that like the beets that I planted forever ago are not as good as the beets that are under here. And like, this is just broken. It's, it, it's just broken, but it's keeping the birds off and keeping them from eating them, but it's still letting the rain through. So yeah temporary solutions that are yielding very good results even though this I wish that the quality of this was better and it lasted longer than like a week and a half it's fine it's the week and a half this needed to be successful but butterflies can get in here now and uh, decimate the rest of the crop so there's new problems it's fine there's always new problems that is just a weedy mess that I need to deal with at some point um purposely growing oxalis so but now it is taken over. So I don't know that I want this to just be an oxalis bed. But it's kind of what's happening right now. Uh, yeah. I think that might be a cauliflower. I don't know. I keep having these. I'm growing too many brassicas. And I don't label anything. So this is my own fault. My own doing. Do not be like me. Label your stuff. Um, but yeah. And then I just keep growing weird things in the weird containers that I have. Because weird containers everywhere and yeah tomatoes on the fence line are still fine roses are happy we're still getting cucumbers i need to water everything um every day i have new raspberries that are ripe so, those are great and they've been going since june i think but yeah um I have to eat them here with you because my kids eat them all. I don't get to eat any because if I put them in a bucket, the kids are, they're gone, right? Like, or if the kids are outside with me, they just eat every single one, which is good. It's good for them. And I'm glad that they like fruits and stuff. That's razor lettuce. No one wants that in their life. Um, this is a banana pants mess. Um, but there's some purple sprouting broccoli, volunteer raspberries. Um, they've run out from this into the bed. And so I'm pulling them up and putting them in the line so that we can just have an entire bank of raspberries. That's the plan. So yeah, yeah that's the plan. This will eventually be nothing but raspberries. Um, and so yeah, I just need to pull these up and transplant them. I've just been waiting for things to go dormant so that it's better for them. But the weather seems to be calming down, so maybe I'll do this next week so that I can clean out this bed and um, get the raspberries in line, build a little bit more structure there. I need to run a wire to keep all of the branches up. Um, but yeah, but so dig these up, put those in the line, find holes for them, and then I have a bunch of other brassicas that I need to transplant out some some starts so that may be the next best course of action that spaghetti squash is dead it's fine uh, we got one off of it and it's fine these kale plants on the end are doing really well this calendula is doing okay powdery mildew same thing there powdery mildew but we have a giant <laughs> spaghetti squash just growing on the fence right now and going through the birch tree so it's very funny Things are hilarious. I've got tomatoes. Those were my original plants. This was a sucker. And oh, you split. But that's okay. We just got a stupid amount of rain. And it split. But this is the Cherokee purple. That's beautiful, big, potato leaf variety. Um, just growing in this very random bed um, with some celery that went to seed which I need to harvest the celery seed on here too so I'm just letting everything go to seed and if we get volunteer celery in the walkway next year it'll be really funny 
think the bug just went in my shoe. The other reason not to wear these. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, the oregano is taking over, much like the oxalis over there. Um, but it's really happy and pretty. And I put this in, like, our weekly flower arrangement. Oh, that I do not like to see. Um, yeah, and there's some radishes and some more Chinese cabbage. I don't know what else. Oh, zinnia that is like turning into a ghost now. It was yellow like that, and now it's just getting really pale. Which is really pr it's pretty. It's my first time growing zinnias. I normally don't grow flowers because I'm a weirdo. Um, I have no idea what this brassica is, but it is not happy, and it is covered in frost. That's weird. It's fine. Uh, these beans, I keep threatening to take them out, and then they set off new growth, and I'm like, all right, fine. You can stay. Uh, this tomato, I think, froze last night. So I think that's dead, because it got down to seven. Which, oh, I don't. It was 43 Fahrenheit last night. And I'm like, it's September. Come on, guys. Don't do this to me. Uh, but yeah, and then getting little broccoli heads here. And that one, I should cut the tip off so that it comes out more. And then that's the chaos of the greenhouse. And I need to water severely. I need to water this front garden a bit. Um, yeah, but we're still getting stuff and it's nice and warm in here. And I just leave the doors open. So we've got eggplants that need to get harvested soon. More peppers that are getting ripe. Uh, this is, I think, lemon dream is what it was called, um, from Pennard Plants. And so it's a patio small pepper. And then that's a Sweet 100 Sucker, Sweet 100 Sucker, San Marzano's, that, like, it's bananas to me. But yeah, we've got tons of tomatoes still coming. Um, and yeah, I don't have a lot of space, but... You can hear everybody just waking up. Because I came in here to clean up this Colette. And all of the bees just ran around in crazy circles. So Colettes are a cross between uh, kale and Brussels sprout. So they're supposed to have these really pretty little florets. Um, I've been waiting for them to produce all season. And I think they're just now starting to get it together. I probably have to fertilize them again. Because they, I assume, are very hungry plants. Nitrogen. Um, but as the leaves get older, these are good chicken snacks. And I'm just pruning them for the chickens. Oh. There you go, guys. Yeah. I know. You said you wanted breakfast. Oh, yeah. And there's aphids on them, because of course. So that's a little extra protein for the chick chicks. But, yeah. Uh, Steve's Seaside Allotment talks about how much they love Colette's. And I spent most of winter listening to that, so I just keep trying to grow them everywhere. But I haven't actually eaten one yet. <laughs> um, but they have gotten a lot of space dedicated to my garden. Um, sweet 100 cherry tomatoes are very prolific. And indeterminate. You just take a sucker, put it somewhere. Another Phasalis. Which, they're really pretty flowers. They're like a cool feeling plant. They're very velvety. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's what? Next year. New, new plans for next year. Uh, yeah. I think we can officially say we are going out of the summer into the fall garden since it got so cold last night and this is going to be the last summer garden tour and we are almost ready to harvest our one and only melon <laughs> so yeah it'll be good that's a creepy looking tomato i don't want that in my life i'll go to the chickens too <laughs> thanks for watching <laughs>